right, so we're back at it today. We're out in the garage, messing with the engine from the Raging Raisin. As you saw in one of the last videos of that thing, the thing was a roach. It was not what the owner was told when he purchased the car. Once we got into it, we found out the heads were cracked and all that stuff. If you didn't see that video, go back, check it out. It was, it was a nightmare. Today, we're actually buttoning up the new engine for this car. I've been working on it for the last uh, week or two. So we got the short block all put together. Gen three and a half is what everybody would call this. Third gen iron block. It's got all the same length head bolt holes or head bolts, gap to rings. It's got a sloppy stage two cam in it, all new lifters, lifter trays, new bearings, oil pump, timing set, everything. Um, everything's new. And we got some parts here from Jegs. And uh, I'm gonna try these. I got a set of cylinder heads for this. The heads on this motor originally were cracked. Um, they were cracked around the head bolt, so it was getting water in the oil, which is why this engine was just a nightmare. So I told him, I said, hey, you know, we got an option where you can buy a completely assembled cylinder head from Jegs. And we just said, hell with it, let's do that. So we've got a set of them here. Let me set one of them up here and uh, kind of show you what they look like. So this is a new casting. It's not an OEM casting. It's funny because it does say 243 on it. Um, but it's a brand new casting. You can tell it's actually to me it feels heavier than an OEM casting But these are based off the 243. They got two inch one five or two inch intake 159 exhaust valves 69 cc chambers um, But yeah, it's basically just a brand new cast cylinder head and uh, These are ready to go on the motor out of the box. The uh, springs are gonna be a question um, they may not be big enough, but we'll see. If they don't, we'll get some packs and we'll throw some packs on it, but I figure why not? And they actually come with like an aftermarket steel retainer, which actually looks good for the conical um, valve spring. So, but yeah, we'll get these uh, tossed on here, get everything torqued down, and pretty soon we'll be putting this thing back in the car. We got it in here on the hoist, and we're getting ready to set this thing down in here. Let me tell you, this is a good looking unit here. Got those new EQ heads. Look like a pretty nice piece for the money. We got the balancer and everything on it, intake. Just got the uh, flex plate and everything put back on it. Got sealer put on all the bolts, got everything torqued down there. We're gonna get this thing dropped down in here, get it up in the air, we can get the tranny bolted to it, torque converter and everything, all that. But uh, let's go ahead and roll this over to the car, get this set down in engine bay, and uh, just keep plugging away in this thing. So we've been chipping away at this. We got valve covers on it now. We got ICT coil brackets. We did the valve covers in black. I was gonna do them in silver, but then when I, once I thought about it, I was like, well, but we gotta, we're gonna put coil brackets on it. If I was gonna use the stock coil brackets, um, I would have left the valve covers like silver, raw aluminum. They would have looked better with the black coil brackets, but I kind of flip flopped it. Did the billet brackets, cleans all that up a little bit. I'll get uh, new harnesses or uh, new coil harnesses so we don't have the old nasty coil harness set up on here and uh but yeah now i got new valve cover gaskets everything's painted and everything we put the valve springs on the pack 1218s now i've got to put spark plugs in and I've, hopefully we can try and fire this thing up in the next day or two my next order of business will be modifying the fuel rails to get the fuel rails to work with this china intake we'll get to uh trying to make some brackets because the this were for these were for the uh, uh stock intake so you can see the bracket mounting tabs up here We've actually got a mount down here on both sides. So we're definitely gonna have to make some brackets or flip flop these, cut them, weld them, modify them, make them work. And then uh, we'll get the injectors cleaned because these were nasty. And uh, then we should be ready to uh, try and fire this thing up. So we'll get those rails done real quick, get the injectors clean and all that stuff. Um, obviously I gotta get the cool harnesses and everything. And then uh, we'll try and get this thing fired up. Got a, last thing I did was modify these uh, fuel rails, made some brackets to use uh, his pre-existing fuel rails on this new um, China Edelbrock knockoff intake. And then uh, I tried to flow his injectors and his injectors had some issues. So I had some spare injectors here just for startup purposes. So I threw those in. I got to run adapters because these don't match his harness. Now, like I said, I'm gonna get some plumbing done and then let's see if we can fire this new five three up and uh, see what it sounds like um fuel lines and everything are on and tight i believe so 
had to build a new tune file because we changed the injectors and uh we're gonna get this uploaded in the ecu here and uh i've had the battery on the charger hopefully that'll help uh crank on it but uh I put about a gallon and a half of fuel in it. Ouch. So. Turn some stuff on, let it prime. And I cranked on it quite a bit to try and get some fuel or some oil pressure built up. And uh, it was running the battery down. So we're just gonna try and bump it, make sure the pressure comes up instantly if it doesn't shut it off so we're gonna upload this tune in it um, let that cycle okay probably need to do a TPS auto set too just for good measure I think I'm actually gonna crawl in the seat here and uh, Ooh, that pump sounds pissed. Let's go in here. TPS auto set. Press the pedal down twice and release slowly. That's done. So now we've uh, uploaded our tune. Let's get to something that's got oil pressure and uh, see what happens. Okay, I saw some oil pressure come up there. Try it again. Something was pissed. What the hell was that? It might have been the converter pushing itself out. Uh, make sure the converter's not touching anything. Nope, converter's not touching anything. That was weird. That was a really weird noise. Definitely a converter and a flex plate. Not liking each other. Dang it. Maybe I need to jack the nose up a little bit. So we got really good oil pressure, 65 pounds. of the car is down so the uh, converter is probably uh, yeah the converters tilting back er, falling back towards the flex plate hitting it so let's see now I got jacked up Let's see if it does it again. Nope, it don't like that. Well, 
never had that issue before. So, well, it starts. We'll have to get it in the shop, get it on the lift and uh, see what that's all about. Yeah, so it's the converter's touching the flex plate. It doesn't push back in far enough. So this uh, torque converter actually touches the flex plate. So that's the noise you're hearing is the, com the flex plate turning, catching the converter. And it's just like metal on metal because it's trying to spin it because it actually spun the converter. Uh, what little it had touched it and spit some fluid out on the ground here. Um, cause I don't have the lines or nothing hooked up because I don't have the converter hooked up to it, but I have to get that sorted out. Got to go get a belt for it. And then I want to try and get the alternator and stuff wired up. That way we can start it up and, uh, it'll charge the battery. And then we got to start on, uh, doing some cooling system plumbing too. So we can sort that out as well. We got it up and running um, pretty much after that video the fuel pump died and I tried to throw another fuel pump in it and the one I had wouldn't work um, had different fitting sizes and stuff so we're in a position right now where a bunch of the wiring needs to be redone on the car um, they had a wiring mess back here in the back would just I'll see if I can show you they had wires ran with bolts through them, power wires. So there was some like, some not so good wiring done in this thing. And then they cut all the factory wiring. And uh, we're gonna work on getting all that yanked out. We're gonna buy a new, basically like a generic hot rod, 12 circuit harness kit. And we're gonna rewire this whole car. Um, headlights, taillights, turn signals. Um, try and do it fairly inexpensively. Nothing about wiring's inexpensive, but uh, it's gonna be time consuming more than anything. I think the relay kit's like 195 bucks or something by the time you ship it and whatnot, but we're gonna work on that. And, uh, but we got the car up and running. Um, we've still got some fuel system stuff to do to it. We still have a ways to go on this car, but the new engine is in it. It starts, it runs. The transmission noise that you heard there in the video. So when I, I don't know why I did it this way, when I bolted it all together, motor transmission, and everything, had it in the car, I pushed the converter back into the transmission into the pump to keep it away from the flex plate. I didn't take in consideration that the snout of the crank is still touching the back, or the snout of the converter is still touching the back of the crankshaft, and that's the noise you were hearing, and the converter's kind of in there flopping around. It's not a really good precise fit, so it was causing the converter to jump around a little bit and causing it to contact with the flex plate, which you can hear the really high pitch, like ding, ding, ding. And most of you know, like, you know that noise when you hear it, like it's it's not an uncommon. If you know anything about small block Chevys back in the day, that was a very common noise when the starters would take a shit. Um, that, that just high pitch tinny sound, but uh, kind of like that. <laughs> but like I said, we got it in the car, it runs and everything. We have a bunch more work to do, a bunch more videos coming in this car. This car is going to get dyno videos, um, track time videos, and all that stuff. So be on the lookout for the Rage and Raisin. This thing's going to be a cool, cool car, and I can't wait to test it. But that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep following along. Comment, like, subscribe. Do all that stuff. Hit the bell for notifications. And also go over check out the merch store, mremotorsports.com. Um, we have very little traffic. I think I sold, what is it? It's June now. And... In six months, I've sold one thing. And it was a sticker. It was a, I think it was like a, however much that sticker is. I don't, I don't even know what the price is on it. But I think I made like 25 cents off a sticker. But go over, check it out. We've got some merch on there. It's, we don't have a whole lot of stuff. I'm, I need to get back into trying to throw together some, you know, some different options for shirts and, you know, all that stuff. But anyways, go over, check it out. Just take a look. Just see what you got. See what I got. Check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.